We can recognize that, in fact, our common enemy, I know my, my colleague talked about the government, but it's really the status quo. That's not working not only for First Nations, it's not working for Canadians, and it's not working for governments. That was Assembly of First Nations Grand Chief Sean Atlio making an announcement with other B.C. chiefs in Vancouver yesterday. Well, while Theresa Spence has stolen the spotlight with her sideshow in Ottawa, there are Indian chiefs making a difference. And they're not getting the kind of media exposure that I think they should. I'm sick of talking about the bad news. Today we're going to talk about the good news, the great news. We're talking with Chief Clarence Louie of the Asoyuz First Nation in the heart of B.C. Welcome to the program, Chief Louie. Good morning. I am delighted to have you on the show. I don't think most Canadians know about you, but you have turned your Indian band into an entrepreneurial hub where unemployment is unheard of. If, if someone wants a job, it's there. And the economic prosperity is equal to that of off-reserve towns. How did you do it? By focusing on creating jobs uh, and making money. That's what I love doing. Two things I love doing. I, I haven't heard another chief say this. I love creating jobs for my people, and I love making money for the City of Sinian Band. And I believe every First Nation, our history is a working culture, and we have to get back back in the economy of our of our traditional territories. And that's a full time job. All the successful people I have read about and I follow all focus on trying to cover one base. We have too many leaders out there trying to cover all the bases. That's impossible. You know, so we, we, we have members uh, on our council that love dealing in the provincial and national issues, and those issues are important. We need somebody to cover that base, but it's not going to be me. Tell I, me the I kind of... staying home here and creating jobs and making money. I expect another member of council to cover that base. On screen right now, we're showing different images from your band. Can you describe for us the kind of industry that you have helped develop on your reserve? Well, we're in the tourism... Uh, Businesses, golf courses, wineries, hotels. We're in a construction business where we have gas station and store. We, we, and we have a cement plant. We employ hundreds and hundreds of non-native people as well. And, that, and that's proof that when a First Nation becomes successful in the area of business and jobs, everybody benefits. All the contractors benefit. All the non-native people that work for us benefit. We contribute $40 million or more into the economy of our region. And there's a handful of First Nations in every province doing what we're doing. It's not just those Suyus. And it's not just to say that, you know, that, that we're over the finish line. Because in business, there is no finish line. Now, you uh, take a moral approach, not just a financial approach. You have mottos about showing up to work on time and about not making excuses. These are dramatic and even politically incorrect things to say. Tell me your philosophy. What do you say to a young... Uh, I don't think they're politically incorrect to say. Only to the lazy crowd are they politically incorrect to say. Even the old-timers here... Osuyus is not a perfect First Nation. We still have our hang-ups. We still have our dysfunctions. We have a lazy crowd. The old-timers use the word, the lazy ones. Stay away from the lazy ones. We, we have people here that I shake my head at saying, you know, you have job opportunities, but you don't want to take them. You'd rather drink and drug, or you'd rather join the hangout crowd. In every First Nation, it's not just Native, even non-Native. I go to every city and I see people pushing carts when there's help wanted signs or job posting signs. Now, it's not you can just snap your finger. I'm not a psychologist. I don't understand why some people don't want to work. But I do understand why a lot, a lot of Native First Nations are in this dependency cycle or this welfare cycle. It's because of the government programs and the fact that the government has controlled us for far too long, and they purposely did to, that to us in order to, it, to take away the best lands, even the reserve lands. Osuyus lost 4,000 of our best acres because around 1915, the white people said those Indians aren't doing anything with their land. We need it. So there is a lot of injustices. I'll admit that, but at the same time, we have to start standing on our own two feet and creating our own jobs and making our own money. What was the moment where your band turned around? When did things click with you that entrepreneurialism and industry was the future for your people? Was there a particular uh, event that sparked that? Um, I was elected in 1984, 25, 20, almost 30 years ago. Before me, others, other previous chiefs and councils, our first land lease was in 1963. 
Our first business was in 1968. So other chiefs and councils have led the way in saying, well, we, we need to bring jobs to this reserve. We need to start making our own money through our leases. And we took over, over our, 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 our taxation powers on the reserve in 1995. So it hasn't just been me or, or the councils that, that I've been on. But the majority of my people, 80% or more of my people want to be self-supporting. They want a job. They don't want to just be hanging around or standing in a, in a welfare line. The majority of my people want to work. Now, how are you uh, treated or how do other chiefs respond to you? Are, do they encourage you? Do they ask you for tips or advice? Do, they, do you swap ideas with them? Uh, how are you treated by the other 600 or so First Nations in Canada? Well, I don't know about 600 or so, but I do know from the emails we get and the number of bands that come here to visit us to go to school on us, not just those Suyus. There's, uh, I keep, I'll keep on saying there's a handful of bands in every province doing what Osuyus is doing. And I'm sure those bands get, get the visits, get the phone calls from other First Nations. The, the amount of calls I get, the amount of speaking engagements I get to go speak to other First Nations in the conferences that we hold here at Osuyus with, with our resort, where hundreds, three or four times a year, we sit down and talk jobs and money making our own money for at our conferences. We have a tourism conference coming up in March. We have an ECDEV conference the last week of June. And our yearly September conference is always sold out. Corporate Canada comes to our conferences. Government comes. White people come. Natives come from across the country. That's what I want to see happen. Economic Development Conference. We, we have enough conferences on social aches and pains. We need conferences, which is good to see. It's only been the last decade, whether it's in Canada, the U.S., Australia, New Zealand, where First Nations, where, where Indigenous people are having their own ECDEV conferences, and, and, and they're having every corporation you can think of come to their conference. I love hanging around business people. That's who I want to hang around. Hmm. Chief Louis, we only have about a minute left. If you had one piece of advice for some of the bands that are economically behind, that are mismanaged, where there's uh, tremendous uh, economic and even social depression, if you could give them one piece of advice, what would it be? Get some advice. Every successful person I know has advisors. But from whom? I mean, I there's all advisors, sorts of people. Legal advisors. But, Chief, there's all sorts of people, no shortage of people in the Indian industry saying, do this, do that. But, but how is your advice different from the bad advice they've obviously been getting? I go to school on successful people. I don't care if they're native or non-native. Success is a study like, like any other study. And we have to have a majority of our council. I'm not saying all the council, because you have to cover off these, these, these other bases. But a majority of your council, you've got to have some leadership within that First Nation that wants to focus on creating jobs and making money. The biggest employer should not be the band office. The biggest employer should be the business side of that First Nation. We employ over 30 different First Nations at OCUs. They come from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, all over the B.C. and the Yukon, because we have jobs. Last question, Chief. Who is your role model? Successful business people, successful athletes. My library is filled with the biographies of successful people. Chief Clarence Louis of Soyuz First Nation, what a great pleasure to hear your story and your wise words. Thank you and good luck to you and all your people. Thank you, sir.